I think now Aliza will continue with the latest development, and then we will uh, we will summarize and conclude the presentation. So, um, I mean, right after the elections, um, the new government, the Erdogan administration, um, launched a new program, a new economic model, and a new economic program. But I mean, um, at the same day, they um, made it official. They explained their new economic model. model. We witnessed um, a dramatic rise. Uh, in the um, U.S. dollar's value against Turkish lira, um, it was it was the result of the last five years of I mean developments and the postponing of the problems um, and deteriorating conditions. So it was, um, of course, the political explanation and the political um, factors are important, such as the um, such as the, um, for example, Erdogan's. Um, official explanation uh, live on Bloomberg saying that the central bank should not act independently. Uh, we will control the interest rates. I mean, it created a, an interest rate high. Uh, it created a kind of uh, a currency shock in May and resulted in capital outflows. And of course, uh, the hollowness of the new economic model uh, had an impact upon this uh, currency um, shock. But I mean, it has it has a lot to do with the last five years, and it has a lot to do with the tightening of the global financial conditions. So again, as as I have as I tried to mention, for um, in the first eight months uh, of 2018, Turkish lira lost 42% uh, of its value against the US dollar. Um, so currently, um, this is a this is a graph um, made by um, this shows the real effective exchange rate of uh, Turkish lira. Um, it's consumer price index based. You can you can see the overvaluation of uh, Turkish lira right after the 2001 crisis up until uh, 2008. You can see that Turkish lira was losing its value against US dollar in the previous years, but there has occurred a kind of free fall within this year. I mean, normally, um, the, such a uh, such currency crisis, uh, of course, will will have a negative impact upon the economic activity. But the situation is more dire, uh, dire in in Turkish case because of the um, foreign exchange denominated debt of uh, non financial corporations. Um, I mean. Um, of course, it has a lot to do with the Justice and Development Party's economic policies and their response to the 2008-2009 contraction. Um, Justice and Development Party made it, made it easier for the non-financial corporations to borrow in foreign exchange. The non-financial corporations that did not have foreign exchange revenues can, after 20 uh, after 2009 can easily borrow could easily borrow in foreign exchange terms so um and for those in the left upper hand side of this diagram uh, the 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 problems are uh, much more serious because they lack export revenues but they have um high foreign exchange denominated debts the real estate corporations, hotels, restaurants, elect electricity and gas, uh, um, I mean, the corporations that are operating in electricity and gas sector. So it, that's the, this is another way of showing the problems of the Turkish non-financial sector. Uh, the total foreign exchange liabilities of uh, Turkish non-financial corporations um, reached to $340 billion by the first half of 2018. Now it was, we, we're talking about a, um, uh, an increase from a level that is below $100 billion mm -hmm. to $340 billion just in eight years of time, just in eight and nine years of time. Um, so mainly 
these companies, the real estate uh, corporations uh, and the corporations that are operating in energy sector, but also producing machinery, um, the automobile um, corporations operating in Turkey, they they have a huge problem of um, rolling over their foreign exchange denominated debt. Um, now, um, in uh, when you see the external debt stock uh, ratios, I mean, when compared with the advanced capitalist countries, these ratios seem to be uh, not that important. Uh, but since these countries are um, are the so-called emerging markets that are uh, that mainly countries such as Turkey, South Africa, Mexico, and Argentina, mainly dependent on the uh, capital inflows. Um, the ratios such as 40% of GDP, such as 50% of GDP, um, show a worsening a situation and shows a kind of desperate need to refinance under the conditions of global financial tightening. Now, thanks to the uh, regulations right after the 2001 crisis, we do not see um, foreign exchange denominated debt of households in Turkey because it was forbidden right after the 2001 crisis. Um, and um, the, the IMF program right after 2001 crisis made the government to produce primary surpluses for many years. And by the help of these primary surpluses, the public debt problem, um, um, I mean, they did not overcome the public debt problem, but they, uh, it, it became easier to roll over public debt. And also the composition of the public debt changed. Um, now the foreign currency denominated government debt only amounts almost to 10, almost 10 percent of the GDP. But thanks to the decision by 2009 to make it easier for non-financial corporations to borrow in dollar terms, to borrow in euro terms, the debt of non-financial corporations and financial corporations increased rapidly. So the, the money has to come from somewhere, of course. I mean, um, the Turkish banks funded the government by borrowing from international financial markets back in the 1990s. The Turkish banks funded the corporations and the households um, in the post-2001 period by borrowing from the international financial markets after the 2001 crisis. Um, this is why, I mean, Turkey became a hot topic in mid-2018 since the international bank's exposure to Turkey um, is, 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 an important, um, is an important aspect of the crisis that the, the, there can be a contagion, Im, a contagion effect if the Turkish crisis is not controlled. Um, the exposure of Spanish, French, and Italian banks to Turkish banks um, reached to $140 billion by mid-2018. So um, if this crisis um, gets into, I mean, takes the form of an real sector crisis, and then uh, turns into a financial crisis since many non-financial corporations default, uh, then it will definitely mean, I mean, the Turkish financial crisis can have a severe impact upon the European banking system. Um, the major policy response of Turkish government Erdogan administration and the central bank was to um, launch a new economic program and then came an interest rate hike by September, mid-September. So this credit crunch shows 
the impact of this uh, interest rate hike. Um, another form of showing, I'm sorry, um, another uh, way of showing will be to show the credit volume in Turkey. Um, for the first time since 2009 contraction, we are seeing um, a contraction in bank credits uh, in real terms. So this credit crunch will definitely impact upon uh, the uh, real sector. And we are now at the beginning of a stagflation period. Um, the currency crisis resulted in the rising inflation because of the import dependency of the production sector, because the, the important go imported goods carry a, um, a great deal of importance for, for the production. And it increased um, rapidly the uh, producers' price index. Um, and this currency crisis that we had in um, the last months um, put a definite end to the state-sponsored credit expansion of 2017. UMIT has talked about the uh, use of credit guarantee fund to postpone the problems to escape to the future. I mean, it, it, it was important. It was not an irrational decision when considered the um, approach of the policymakers. The main reason they used such a mechanism was to uh, avoid a recession before the 2017 referendum and before the 2018 elections. So it succeeded but aggravated the situation, deteriorated the position of many um, corporations uh, in, in Turkey. So um, before trying to wrap up my part, now um, the use of credit guarantee fund um, made it easier for small and medium enterprises to uh, refinance their debt um, and, uh, um, and the Justice and Development Party and the Erdogan administration actually bailed out thousands of firms. But now we are also, in these months, these refinanced loans, will uh, we will see the payment back by the small and medium enterprises. I mean, uh, since these small and medium enterprises cannot pay back, um, so the government, um, the Erdogan administration had to devise a new framework for debt restructuring in Turkey. Uh, so this uh, negotiations are going on about the debt restructuring. Um, but the interest rates are so high and the inflation rate is so high that um, um, we are not experiencing a an economic stagnation by the first quarter of 2018, but we will most probably witness a recession, a, a, the beginning of recession in the last months of 2018. I mean, um, the data coming in recent weeks uh, show that it will be a surprise if we do not see a contraction by the last months of 2018. So the, the, these slides show the consumer prices, um, the increase in consumer prices index. Um, for the, uh, the, the, the October data shows that the inflation rate is now 25% in Turkey. And also the October data, uh, the last data show that uh, the inflation rate for the domestic producers, uh, domestic producers has, um, I mean, it is still, above 40 percent it's 45 percent for october um, so such high interest rates actually uh, impact upon the credit expansion mechanism that we explained uh, lower interest rates credit expansion so um, uh, lively construction sector um, and um, ability to for the households to compensate their losses by borrowing. Um, but most probably, um, we will not be able to talk about such 
credit expansion for for the coming months. And actually, we are we may be witnessing the end of this. Uh, uh, we may be seeing a, an important part in terms of the credit expansion period. Um, the ratio of household debt to GDP was around two percent in 2002, but it increased to 16 percent uh, by uh, 2010. The, the increase went on for another uh, couple of years, but uh, as a result of the, the the turning point that we tried to uh, elaborate, we are seeing the stagnation of household debt, the ratio of uh, household debt to GDP. So a major mechanism to derive political support for Justice and Development Party does not work anymore. We are also seeing the collapse of the mortgage market. Now, Turkey does not have a securitized mortgage market in the sense of European countries or in the sense of, uh, of uh, advanced capitalist countries, but still um, the mortgage market um, show that um, the construction sector was, uh, I mean, lively and the investment into housing, buying a house was profitable for large segments of the population. Um, th there has occurred a dramatic decline in the use of mortgages. Um, the government is now discussing about a bailing out mechanism, a mechanism to bail out the construction sector as a whole. Since the construction companies are largely indebted to Turkish banks, um, it, it is actually not only a bailout for the construction sector, but also it will be a bailout for the banking sector as well. But who will pay for this bailout? So we again. Uh, see this um, the marketing of the austerity program by not only the Erdogan administration but also many proponents of the IMF orthodox uh, programs so they despite uh, disagreements between the Erdogan administration the representatives of Erdogan administration and many um, uh, neoliberal economists um, the need for austerity, they seem to agree on the need for austerity. Um, what we see by looking at the explanations of the uh, top level policymakers and the new economic program of uh, Erdogan administration, they want to impose a clear uh, austerity program. They want to cut social security, um, the benefit payments, they want to save from the social security system. Um, the amount will be 10.1 billion Turkish lira. They want to also increase budget revenues by new taxes in the coming year, 16 million Turkish lira, uh, the official explanation, the official figure explained. Um, they are using the funds accumulated in the unemployment insurance fund to support the corporations. Um, so um, they are, I mean, it is not a, um, a kind of direct transfer from the unemployment insurance fund to another fund, to bailout fund, but it is um, actually repeating uh, again and again the, um, um, the incentives to the real sector corporations, to the non-financial corporations, by using the accumulated funds in unemployment insurance fund. Now, um, in September, in mid-September, the Minister of Finance and Treasury uh, also declared that their target for 2019 was, their unemployment target for 2019 was 12%, above 12%. Um, so it shows that um, if you consider those who are, are marginally related to the actual labor market, um, who, consider, uh, who can be considered as parts of the surplus population. Um, the Minister of Finance and Treasury actually uh, may, um, actually declared that their target was to have 
almost 1 million new unemployed in the coming year. So, uh, so the crisis is still unfolding. Uh, the stagnation will turn into most probably a recession. And even the Erdogan administration itself, despite their explanations that the recovery will take place by early 2019, seems to, when it comes to the figures, when it comes to the numbers, seems to um, think that um, for most part of the, for most months of the 2019, we will not see the expected recovery. So I will leave the floor uh, to Emit for wrapping up. Um, but let me briefly summarize uh, what I'm trying to argue. Um, Justice and Development Party uh, pushed for financial deepening, um, but the, uh, this financial deepening um, that they uh, strive for um, does not mean that we have a financial market we have a deepened financial market now, as in the case of so-called um, and the advanced capitalist countries. This, this is still uh, we're talking about a financial market, uh, and we're talking about the uh, industrial structure that is largely dependent on the capital inflows, uh, and that is largely dependent on the uh, global financial conditions. So, thanks to the uh, global financial tightening and the vulnerabilities of the Turkish economy. We are, new, we are now seeing as the skyrocketing of inflation. We are now seeing a private debt crisis, a debt crisis by, for, um, by the non-financial corporations and um, attempts to bail out the construction sector, which also mean uh, prevent, uh, measures to prevent a banking crisis. <clears throat> 